Hola, Bernarders. It's Mr. J again. Um, basically, I thought I would walk you through what came out last night in a webinar with Trevor Packer at College Board AP. It's the procedural guide for what you're supposed to do on the day of the exam. So I just wanted to walk you through a few key pages. Now, you have the entire document if you want to go through every single consideration. That's totally fine. It is kind of long at 51 pages. So I thought I would just hit the highlights with you in this brief little presentation. Um, but ultimately, I'll uh, move this out of the way and then we can talk about some other things for you there. Um, my mouse is playing around here. Um, trying just to turn that off. There we go. Okay. And now we can move ahead. Um, uh, last night, Trevor walked us through each page of this, and I just wanted to highlight a few key things. Most of the documents that you need to print and fill out just so that you have it as a ready reference on the day of the test, I've posted um, as documents to the right of this video. So just look for them when you're done looking over this, and I think you'll have everything that you need. So uh, this is just a summary page of all the resources they've prepared for you about the day of the exam. So you can see this test guide is one of them. It's just a PDF you can look through. Uh, the exam day checklist, which I think will be very helpful with those pesky ID numbers and things like that, that you're always having to look up and enter. That way you won't waste time uh, trying to find those things on the day of the AP. Uh, required documents that students should print or download for specific exams. I'm not sure there's anything special that's required because they're going to be sending you, at least for our history, an e-ticket that's specific to you um, and can't be shared with others. But I think that's all that you're going to need is the e-ticket. So uh, for the testing demo, this is going to be available May 4th, and this will be a wonderful chance to check up on your technology if what you're using at home will work or not. You'll get an e-ticket that you can then submit back to College Board. They will open up a document for you. You'll answer some questions and you'll submit it. And basically, um, it'll be just a test run. Um, it'll be a test run of whether you can access everything they're throwing to your laptop and whether they can read the things that you're throwing back to them. So I really think that's a good idea for you to practice that. And I'll be putting that into our review timeline okay over the next couple of days but um ap world language culture exams were okay there detailed faqs um those are all i think on the college board uh, ap website so if you have some specific questions they've, they've got some things set up for you now uh what's in this guide and i think these are the things that are important for us to look at your ap exam e-ticket you kind of need to know what that looks like i'll show it to you five steps to take before exam day that is what these two weeks are all about you want all of those steps done so that you're not stressed out the night before the test okay exam day tips for successfully completing your online exams we'll go through through a couple of those and then we'll wrap it up really quick with exam scores credit and placement okay um to show you your ap exam ticket this is kind of sort of what it's going to look like um, before you take your test, two days before you take your test, you're going to get this thing from College Board that looks something like this. It'll have a, a specific uh, Apple or AP ID for you, and it'll have a link for you to go to your exam at the right time. Now, um, Ms. Schott has prepared a schedule of the Texas Central Standard Time um, uh for each exam, and I posted that here for you, I would just take that and stick it to a wall or stick it somewhere where you would be able to see it in case you have more exams than just art history. But um, don't share your e-ticket with anyone. Um, you could lose your chance to test. Um, you basically, that would flag your responses and that wouldn't be scored. So just realize nobody else can use your ticket because that will show up as a, as a real problem, okay? Uh, moving ahead. Um, the May exam is what you're getting an e-ticket for. Um, if there's any problem, if you have a family emergency or crisis where you can't test on the 15th for art history, then you've got instructions here about what you should do about the makeup exam. Um, I would not plan to get some extra time by scheduling for the makeup exam because something could go wrong then and then you don't have any backup option. So please, please just test on, on the 15th and then we will take it from there. Okay, whoops, went too far. Um, all right, uh, all exams offer a June makeup date. So you will have a chance if there is a problem. Um, reminders about the exam schedule. We've got this figured out thanks to Ms. Schott, so we're okay. 
Uh, what to expect on this year's exams. I want to spend a little time talking to you about this because um, I saw some things that were interesting. Um, I'm, I'm glad that they're confirming over here on the left that it won't be difficult, um, more difficult for you to get like a two, three, four, five or whatever. Um, basically, um, this thing is just not going to work, is it? Okay, so I'll quit doing that. Um, if you, if you, let's see, highlight clicks. Um, I won't highlight clicks. I just wanted to focus, but I'm not able to do it. Okay. Um, that's just, that's, I knew that that would be the case. They're going to take into account the situation that we're having. AP exams are never graded on a curve. That means if you do the tasks, then you get the score. Um, this little thing down here, guys, don't worry if you com don't complete all parts of the question. Um, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt, okay? Uh, you got to remember that some people are taking their uh, world history AP exams and they have a DBQ. A push has a DBQ as well. And they're going to have like maybe five, six, or seven documents that in a normal year they would be able to use more of. This year, in 25 minutes, they're not going to be able to address all six or seven of the documents that are there. Um, we don't have that in art history. Um, your art history college board has already pulled off a task in not making you identify anything. They're probably also going to take out a uh, comparison task somewhere along the way and make this a six point or seven point rubric. So the idea is they've already made our modifications. You guys, I, I need you to do everything you're asked, okay? Don't assume that if you just describe some stuff, then you're going to get a five. You need to do every task point on the exam. So I wanted to qualify that since this is not really about APR history, okay? Um, what to expect on this year's exams. Uh, I will be able to see your responses, guys, and I'll be able to see that if something is not quite where I expect it to be, like you've been writing fours and fives all year and something made you have a problem, um, maybe it was the technology or maybe it's obvious you didn't finish, then I can flag that and, and visit with College Board about how to address that. Um, if I see something that doesn't sound like you, like maybe you copied something from Wikipedia or Khan Academy, I'll be able to flag that as well. So just make sure you're doing what you need to do. The practice that we're doing in our reviews, we're going to be just fine. Um, I'm writing more of those and reviewing more of those today. So, all right, the three ways that you can submit information on um, the page, right? Um, this is the first option where you type up a document and then you copy what you've typed up and put it into their text box, right? Um, another way is attach a typed response like a PDF or a, a Word document. Um, the last way, which is I think the least recommended, is the one where you take a photo of a handwritten sample. I'll show you why I'm a little worried about doing that kind of thing. Uh, because of the steps that are all involved and how many places you could mess that up. Okay, so let's come on down here. Um, <clears throat> here's option one, copy and paste a typed response and then click submit. All right, so you guys can see on your laptop, they've got two windows open and they are telling you that window one should be the prompt and the timer that you don't ever want to click out of. Um, and then the other page should be whatever you type up, right? So that way you're being reminded of the time as you work. When you're done, you can go back and make sure that you've, you've done every one of the tasks in the prompt that you've annotated and marked, and then you'll be more likely to get a higher score. Now, what's not here that I recommend you guys do is print off the prompt and annotate it first. You can type up your response and just disregard the annotation and not have to submit it because you'll use it as a checklist as you type your response, okay? Um, so this is one possible way where you take your document, you take the text and you copy it into a box. The second option is just to attach the document you're working in. I think that this one's probably gonna be the easiest um, or the simplest. Um, and again, you would work with the prompt open with the timer running and your response on the right. When you're done, you save it, you attach it, just like you would like a, um, a an application letter or a document for college admissions, right? Um, I think this is going to be the simplest. That way you're also pretty much guaranteed that your document looks the way that you edited it, 
rather than having some like text uh, box to decide where your line breaks are, whatever. Um, so here's the third option and it is kind of challenging. It's got a lot more steps to it because you have to annotate the question you're answering. You have to put your name everywhere. I mean, there's a lot more annotation that has to happen. I'm worried that if you wrote in pencil, then we wouldn't be able to read it or see it. So there's just a lot of problems here. Oh, and if you happen to be one of those people who uses more than one or two or three sheets of paper when you respond to one of those 30 minute essays, then you have to take a picture of each page and submit each page. Now, if you hit, if you hit submit, without getting all of your pictures in first, then you're done. It's like you just wrote one page. And I think that's really, really scary. Um, this would be like just a backup if you're having a really hard time with your laptop or your, your home uh, technology, okay? I do want you to decide what you're gonna do before um, that day. So we can actually use it um, on May the 4th, okay? Now here's stuff about the music theory exam. Here's world languages. If you guys have one of those, you can certainly go back and take a look at that. Here's a little bit more on testing accommodations, extra time. Um, and other things that you would get, say, like on an SAT test. So if that applies to you, you can definitely look this over. How you go about requesting a makeup exam. Let's say that on May the 15th, there's a, a terrible thunderstorm and it knocks out your power. Well, you basically have some options there for getting uh, a makeup exam for you. So follow those carefully. I just want to highlight for you here um, that note. Okay, guys, running out of time and submitting that response, not submitting it because you didn't get it in that window of time, they're not going to let you retest just because you missed that time window, okay? So um, just know that they're going to say no and they're going to um, not score anything for you if you didn't get the document loaded in time, all right? Running out of time is not a thing. you got to remember to watch that timer, okay? Um, <clears throat> all right, so... The rest of the slides, as you guys can see here, are about um, special considerations and other things. Most of you will be okay with what we've covered so far, but I do want to show you what you need to be doing now in the two weeks before the exam, okay? So here we are. If, if you guys realize you're going to be testing in AP Classroom, right? You got to be able to make sure that you're logging in and able to get in to things like progress checks, um, that kind of stuff. If you've been having trouble doing the assignments I've put on there, then we have a problem. Number one, review your contact information. Uh, log into my AP and make sure that you know your login, that it's correct, that your address is correct. All of that stuff is right. If, if there's something wrong here, it'll make it harder to send reports to your schools later. So definitely review and just make sure that's all good. Number two is check your tech. Uh, you got to figure out what you're comfortable with, if it's going to be like working in Microsoft Word or if you prefer to be a Google Doc person and basically work with two windows while we're practicing. Um, be ready for step number three, practice submitting a response on May 4th. It'll be available um, all the way through and up into um, the exam. Um, so you will be able to do this, um, but it's it better to get it done sooner and know that your tech is set up, right? 25,000 people will sign in to take this exam for art history. If you're taking a push or world, it's more like 250,000 people. They're going to have a lot of tech problems and you want to be at the front of the line in case you have one. Number four, gather what you need for the exam. Um, if you have additional materials, if you guys have been taking um, notes online, typing them up or copying from something, you probably want to print those off and lay them next to you so you'll have them to review. If you've got your binders laid out on your bed, that might be the best way to go. But gather the materials so that you're not running around your bedroom while you're trying to answer an AP question. That just won't work. And then step number five, um, you're going to be getting emails from AP. Make sure that you get confirmation emails from them because that's how they're going to send you your e-ticket, which you def definitely need to have. Okay. Uh, come back to that uh, as you need it. Um, you've got 
got the full document there. Uh, here's the steps reviewing your contact information, right? I think all of that's pretty straightforward. Checking your tech, making sure um, that all of this is going to work. Um, if you're going to have more than one machine open, so you can use one for notes versus your laptop for entering your exam, um, definitely want to be able to leave your laptop keyed into the prompt and what you're typing and not leave during that time to go surf a website or look up some notes on your Google Drive that that will flag everything as a bad day for you, okay? Um, just looking, checking your tech here. You guys realize that we do have a two question exam, right? So art history, you, you want to figure out a way to go Q1 or Q2. Um, that way, and you might just say APAH, Q1, APAH, Q2. Um, whatever works for you will be fine. Um, and that will go in as your submission, but you got to do, do those two separate documents there. Okay. Check your tech, prepare your documents for handwriting. Um, this is, oh, this is going to be hard if this is what you end up having to do. Um, you've got some guidelines here about the pages that you'll need to write, um, and, and what you'll need to do to annotate at the top of each one of them. Um, you will demo uh, the, the practice, and I thought there was a picture here somewhere of someone writing, so that may be later in the PowerPoint, but um, you'll do this on May 4th, um, submitting your responses. Here's a checklist of what you need on exam day, okay? Here's what students need on exam day for specific exams. We don't need calculators or um, tuners or anything, right? I think we basically just need to show up. But if you have another exam, it's there for you to check out, like a language exam or something like that. Um, here's what I really wanted to focus on. Advice about optional resources. Now, you guys realize class notes or study guides, textbooks, and other resources, they're assuming that this is open note and open book, all right? Um, please don't share notes between yourselves on the day of the exam or during the exam because they're going to be watching who's contacting whom. Um, they have to be downloaded to a device and I probably just to prevent any problem would print those off before the day of the exam. Um, internet searches will waste your time and put you at risk of an exam violation. I mean, if you're going to surf around and look stuff up, then you're not spending time writing a good response. And guys, 25 minutes is going to fly by for that first Q1. So please use your time writing and thinking about writing. Please don't use it researching because the buzzer will go off and you won't have put anything in and there just won't be any way I can help you at that point. All right. Um, look for exam confirmation and e-tickets. We've talked about this. Um, for all of your other exams, you're going to get your e-ticket two days before, okay? So um, just be looking for those emails. Um, we are on Friday, so I hope, you know, any kinks to the system will be worked out by the time we take our actual test. Um, there's the checklist. I've already got it loaded for you um, to print off from the Canvas website. Um, here's more information about exam day and what will happen. Okay. I do want to say this. Um, you guys have to check in 30 minutes before the test starts. Our test is scheduled to start at 11 o'clock on, on the, the 15th. Um, that means you need to be seated and logging in at 1030. 25,000 other people are going to be logging in at the same time. So if there's a problem, you don't want to wait five minutes before the test starts. Okay. So you can see the time suggested there, 30 minutes before, <coughs> 40 minute, five minutes to take the test, five minutes to submit. Um, you, the two question exams are over here, so you can see how that will go. That's basically what we are, okay? Um, music theory, I'm gonna skip. World languages, I'll skip. Testing environment. You guys really have to understand that it's gotta be quiet in your house. You've gotta remove distractions. You don't wanna be listening to music. Uh, you don't want to be doing um, other things uh, that might interfere with your focus. Um, so let everybody know the day of your test is March 15th and that you need to be like working on that during that time. OK, exam security. Um, basically, guys, they're not sharing with us um, how they're checking uh, up on people. They've already found some people who were planning to cheat. I don't know how, I don't know whom, but Trevor mentioned that they are watching and, and you just have to just 
they keep everything on the up and up while you're involved on the College Board platform. Okay, here's information about checking into your exam. We've already talked about that. There's the writing. See how you have to annotate each and every page of your writing? Plus, there has to be this number. That's your e-ticket number and your initials. Um, this, this, I mean, you have to do this ahead of time if you're planning on doing it. I just would, I would just use a, a um, an editor like M Microsoft Word or Google Doc. I wouldn't do this. There's how your your um, timer will look. Okay, it'll be nice and big, so you'll be able to see um, how much time is left and how much time is left to submit. Okay. Um, moving down. Yeah, it'll start flashing red when it gets under five minutes. So that will be uh, helpful for you. Uh, here's information on submitting your response. If you've ever had to turn in like a scholarship application online or turn in something to a college online, then that's probably what it's going to be. Uh, it's probably what it's going to be like. Um, what could go wrong while I'm testing? This is basically just your plan B. Okay. Exam scores. Uh, let's see, uh, credit and placement. This is just reminding you that everybody's accepting points. Guys, to take this um, test, like at a college, um, at, at Texas Tech or at Baylor, uh, well, that's Texas Tech first, Texas Tech, UT, A&M, it would cost you about $2,200 because it's a six-hour credit course. Um, that means these 11 or 12 task points that you're having to do are incredibly valuable to you. If you're going to a private school like Baylor or um, TCU, you can multiply the price 2200 by five. And that means these task points are really important to you. We're trying to save you time and money. And these colleges are letting you know that they're still, even this year, going to count um, all of that. So just keep in mind that this is, this is there to help you. All right. Um, I think we've reached the end of the, the talk here. I know I've gone on quite a long way. You, you have this whole presentation, so I think you're going to be fine. Um, but if you've got questions, just let me know by email um, or maybe next week we can do a Google Hangout uh, Q&A. OK, um, let me show you. This is the schedule. You have it just to the right of your uh, video. It shows you our art history exam is Friday, May, t uh, May, May 15th. It says 11 a.m., but you have to check in at 1030. OK, so let's just say 1030, Friday, May 15th. Here is the AP exam day checklist with your, your AP ID and all the information you need, stuff that you won't have to look up on the day of the test. Here is your checklist to let you know if you're ready to test. Um, all of these reminders will be helpful for you, okay? Um, I also put a link to the AP channel about the 2020 exams. Some of you had questions about the format, um, about resources, um, that kind of thing. So that is there for you too, okay? When you come back and look with me, um, you guys can see um, there is, whoops, I'm on the wrong page. Hold up, let me show you. Under the modules, oh, my Computer's slow. Okay, let me close my stuff. There we are. The first review day will have all of this stuff there for you. Okay, so I'm going to put the video right there where it says the highlights and you've got all of these resources around. I'm going to move on and do some reviews of our practice run number three. So I'll be back in a minute. See you later. Thanks.